All right, let's get to it. Lots to talk about on this Thursday evening edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. We've got another powerhouse low pressure system that'll cruise into the Midwest and the Great Lakes over the next 24 hours or so, taking a similar path to the one we had a couple of days ago. This storm even stronger though. Its impacts locally though, focused on the wind and not the snow. We'll talk about the uh, timing and the details and all that coming up. But first, a, a real quick review of today in weather history because it's an interesting date in recent history. Uh, today's record high was set back in 2020, a balmy 70 degrees, the warmest January day on record for us. And interestingly, this uh, January 11th of 2020, this was the third time in four years that we broke a record high on today's date. We had a record high in 2017, 2018, and then in 2020. Uh, prior to 2017, the record high on today's date is in the mid-50s. Now it's 70. So, you know, I haven't poured through all the record books, but I can't imagine there's too many dates on the calendar in which we've seen uh, such a change on it for a daily record high or low temperature in our area. So it, uh, it probably is number one on the list if I uh, were to venture a guess. All right, today nothing like that, unfortunately. It was just kind of a January day out there. It was blustery. It was cold seasonably cold nothing unusual for this time of the year that's going to change in a few days uh today will seem very balmy by comparison and while it was not as windy as the last couple of days it was still you know blustery this afternoon some gusts of 25 to 35 pretty common so for the second time this week the whole area under a wind advisory that goes into effect tomorrow and runs through saturday winter storm warnings of course off to our north and west chicago included grand rapids michigan green bay milwaukee Des Moines, in fact, just about the entire state of Iowa, except maybe one county in the far southeastern part of the state, is under a winter storm warning. A good chunk of both Wisconsin and Michigan also under winter storm warnings. And hey, is there a storm coming? When you look at the entire watch warning map across the U.S., look how much is going on. You know, we're not going to label all these, but a lot of this is our, our wind advisories. Some of these are high wind warnings. Of course, some of these are winter storm warnings and blizzard warnings even across parts of the country so yeah it is a a real mess and this is going to be a rocking storm coming north and east it really hasn't even formed yet but it's going to form in a hurry late tonight tomorrow morning across the high plain states and then track north and east our weather will deteriorate by the end of the day on friday expecting by dinner time friday some wind gusts of 40 miles per hour or so a chilly rain will push in there can be some wet snowflakes around for a couple of hours don't think the snow is going to be much of a big deal both tomorrow evening and then on Saturday. It's all about the wind, which will diminish a little bit overnight Friday night, but then crank back up to between 45 and 50 miles per hour on Saturday. I would expect parts of northeast Ohio and northwest PA to be upgraded from a wind advisory to a high wind warning um, for Saturday. Uh, maybe not in our local area, but kind of a close call as far as meeting the criteria here locally, but uh, certainly places like Toledo, Mansfield, um, those places have a better chance of reaching criteria for high wind warnings. So again, the timing, uh, we're high and dry in the morning, but already in the afternoon, it's getting breezy. I, I, I plotted up the isobars on our model depiction uh, today. I don't do this very often because to the average viewer uh, on TV or even online, uh, I, I kind of have to explain this every time. What are isobars? What do they mean? The average viewer doesn't understand uh, what isobars are and why there's a bunch of white lines on a weather map. So you got to keep it a little bit simple especially for TV purposes. But for the purpose of this video, I've got a big audience full of uh, weather nerds out there. You know, these are isobars, and when they're packed together like this, that usually means wind, gradient wind. Uh, air always blows from areas of higher pressure to lower pressure, and a strong area of low pressure, a really strong area of low pressure, is always going to produce a ton of wind. In fact, pressure records could be set in a couple of states, especially Indiana and maybe Michigan. Uh, the low pressure record for Ohio was during the blizzard of 78, uh, reaching about 956 millibars, I think, in late January of 1978. We're not going to set a record here in the state of Ohio or in Pennsylvania with this system, with the center moving off toward north and west. Rain showers will be around into parts of Friday night. As we get up Saturday morning, though, yeah, the cold front will have passed to the east at this point. Um, you know, I could have drawn a secondary cold front on the map out here, this is the one that's going to usher in the really cold air by Sunday. Saturday is going to be colder, but temperatures will just kind of hover in the upper 20s. It's Saturday night into Sunday that the true cold really settles in. Now, this is going to just be a very windy day Saturday. Flurries and snow showers around, especially morning and midday. I think as we head into Saturday night and into Sunday especially, this will be much more lake effect um, and especially aimed up into far northwest PA and southwest New York. In fact, a very interesting forecast for the Steelers and Bills game. 
uh, played in Orchard Park, New York, which is one of the southern suburbs of Buffalo. It's right in the heart of the western New York snow belts. There's going to be probably up to a foot of snow between Saturday night and Sunday morning. Now, during the game on Sunday, which kicks off at 1, um, the Lake Effect band might wiggle a little bit south of there, but it's going to be a close call. Either way, it'll be a lot of snow in western New York Saturday night and into Sunday while we just deal with cold, gusty breezes across the Mahoning and Shenango Valleys. All right, snow forecast expectations. Again, slushy covering in a couple of spots, maybe Friday evening, but even that's a pretty small chance. This is mostly rain, of course, late in the afternoon into the evening. As we get into Saturday morning and midday, could someone try to pick up a half an inch or an inch worth of snow with these random scattered sh snow showers and flurries? That is a possibility, but we will be far, far from the heart of the snowstorm. That's going to be Chicago to Grand Rapids towards the Thumb in Lower Michigan, and then over towards Toronto. Here's our secondary maxima with the lake effect component in southwest New York and perhaps far, far northwestern PA. In our television viewing area, which of course is the Youngstown area, if you're watching on YouTube and you don't live in our area that I broadcast from, um, this straddles the border between Ohio and Pennsylvania. And generally speaking, yeah, coating to an inch or so, and, and that should about do it, um, maybe an inch and a half in some spots. I doubt anyone in our TV market hits two or three inches. Yeah, it's going to be blustery all the way through Sunday and into Sunday night and Monday morning with actual temperatures dropping down to about 10 Sunday night. I would expect Monday morning our wind chills to be below zero and perhaps even near zero as a lot of us go to work and school Tuesday morning. Monday, a holiday, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So some people will have the day off. It'll be a good day to uh, not venture outside very often. Uh, everybody you know, most people anyway, uh, go to work and school on Tuesday, and uh, that's going to be another blustering cold start to the day. So no doubt, of course, the cold is coming. Will it come with much snow? And the answer to that is probably no, at least in the short and medium range. Here's a look at the next seven days. The GFS model is a little more ambitious with a midweek system that could just graze the area. Um, taken literally, it would have a few inches worth of snow around here with higher amounts to our east. This is going to be, if it happens, mostly an east coast thing, but we'd be on the western fringes and maybe we get a few inches out of that. The European today has no such storm. Yesterday, the European had a stronger storm along the east coast. The ingredients are there for some sort of low pressure system to perhaps form and perhaps impact uh, the far eastern U.S. middle of next week. If it happens, though, chances are we're just on the fringes. And while we might see something out of that, I wouldn't expect it to be a lot. And so bottom line for you, next week or so, I don't think uh, any sort of big ticket blockbuster snowstorms are coming our way. Just a lot of cold air. Now, how long does the cold stick around? I think it's here through about the 20th, 21st. So once it settles in Saturday, we've got a good 8, 9, 10 days of this. Um, but after that, you know, if you're not a fan of this kind of cold, and most of us aren't, um, you're going to like the last 7 to 10 days of January. I think a distinctly different pattern will settle in. Is it going to last forever? No, I think we're back into the cold for a fair amount of February, but at least the last week to perhaps 10 days of January, looking fairly mild. We could have some, uh, you know, some highs in the 40s on occasion during that last week or so of the month, and probably smaller chances of frozen precipitation as a result. And uh, so that'll be a nice little respite after a pretty harsh nine or ten days. Thanks for watching tonight's Weather for Weather Geeks. Always appreciate everyone tuning in. I will see you back here on Friday for an update on the current weather, which will be busy Friday evening, and what to expect over the weekend and beyond. We'll take another look at that potential winter weather mischief, especially in the east, the far east, um, coming up in the middle of next week. We'll do that on Weather for Weather Geeks on Friday. In the meantime, have a great rest of your Thursday night.